Howdy folks, welcome back to the channel, and today I wanted to do the June wrap-up, and June was a big month for me. I think I read the most I've read in a single month uh, this whole year, so we'll have quite a few to get through, but I'll try to not carry on because, oops, I have quite a bit of other videos I want to get to today. So in no particular order, let's just go through it. Um, one of the books I read was Richard Price's um, Blood Brothers, and this one kind of looked at the story of a 17-year-old boy named Stoney grows up in a very working-class household, and it's kind of expected of him, now that he's becoming an adult, that he'll fall in his, father, his father's footsteps to become a member of the electrician's union. And Stoney finds that maybe that's not what he wants to do, and perhaps he wants to do something else, and that something else is working with children. But there's a lot of consequences that come with that, with him kind of going against the grain. It also just looks at other parts of his family life, like his brother, who refuses to eat, his mom, who's pretty abusive, uh, his uncle and dad, who are pretty non-existent, in the family. So this was pretty good. Not my favorite Richard Price, but still uh, got the Richard Price signature style in there, which I did like. Uh, this one I read pretty recently. Uh, this is Mary McCarthy's The Group. And this one looks at the lives of eight. Is it eight? Yeah, eight Vassar graduates during the years of 1933 to 1940, and how after graduation, some of the members grow apart, some become closer, some are intertwined in each other's lives for better or for worse, and it's a work of fiction that also acts as a sort of social history of the United States, kind of what America was like between the two wars, and how those wars would not only influence these particular characters, in their backgrounds and their life outcomes, but also the social norms surrounding them. So this was good and it was huge. And <laughs> there were some times where I felt like it would just go on a little bit forever, but it was awesome. I'm very glad I got to it uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, another one, these next two I read really recently. This one is a sequel uh, to the first book in the series, The Vinyl Ta Detective, uh, Dead Wax. And so this one is The Runout Groove. And so the protagonist, The Vinyl Detective, I don't think he has a name. He's just known as that. Uh, uses his love of vinyl as kind of like a detective service. So this is like a cozy mystery, but a little bit different from most of the cozy mysteries because they're usually about cats or something. Uh, and while there are cats in this, uh, as you can see on the cover, <laughs> they're not as predominant as most. And so in this one, um, the vinyl detective gets two clients who are extremely interested in knowing about the whereabouts of this famous uh, lead singer of this rock band named Valerian. And Valerian had hung herself and her child had gone missing. And this was like 30 odd years ago. And so it's the vinyl detective's job to get to the bottom of why did Valerian hang herself? Like what were the circumstances around that? And to find a missing person. So uh, it wasn't as good as the first one, but it was still awesome. It was uh, good brain candy that I needed, especially after reading the group. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, and the next one here, this is an omnibus, uh, one of three of Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer stories. So I read the first one, I, the jury, and wow, <laughs> wow, I can't believe I've waited this long to get to Mike Hammer. Now, I'm familiar with Mike Hammer in that I've seen uh, the two movies that they did. It was Kiss Me Deadly. And I think they did I, the jury, but it was a weird 3D version. So I knew about that. And I had read a little bit of the Max Allen Collins uh, kind of re-upping of Mike Hammer. 
uh, the will to kill. And I loved that. And so I did this with my friend, Matt, he's still reading it, but we are, we both really enjoyed this. He's still enjoying it. And wow. So toxic masculinity on steroids first off, uh, but also just really great pacing, uh, a lot of action, a gunfight, and for once, you guys, for once, I guessed the right culprit. I never do that. In any of these mysteries, any of these crime books, I always, always get it wrong. And for once, I was right. I won't tell you who, obviously, if you haven't read it, but I was pretty proud of myself to get it right. <laughs> It'll never happen again, though. So, And lastly, if you guys remember me and Colonel Trevor, uh, these are the first eight of Colonel Trevor's military history of World War II. And I have eight more, no, actually seven more to go. So we're just separating for a little bit, but we're, you know, we're still together and all that, but <laughs> I just need some, some time for me. So <laughs> I'll just go quickly over the ones I did read, and I will plan to get to the second half probably by the end of the year. I, I'm also, that second half is about the Pacific Theater, of which I am not nearly as familiar as with the European, of which these books are on. So the first one, European Land Battles, 1939 through 43, and then continuing all the way to 45. And this one was my favorite so far. This is Land Battles. North Africa, Sicily, and Italy. And so we got Naval War in the West, the Raiders, and then the Wolf Packs. And then the Air War from September 1939 to, to May 1941. Continuing on from June 41 to April 45. And then the this is the actually the first one in where we get into the Pacific Theater, and this is Asiatic Land Battles, Expansion of Japan and Asia. And I left off on uh, Japanese ambitions in Asia. And so, yay. So, uh, oh, I also have read another book, but I don't have it because it was a library book. It was a graphic novel by Daniel Klaus, who is pretty popular for his work Ghost World, which is my favorite. Uh, and I read the one he did, The Death Ray, about this kid who his parents are both dead and he finds out that his father had actually injected him with some type of serum, some experiment or whatever, that makes him this type of superhero that can use this gun known as the death ray. And you shoot somebody with it once and they just literally disappear uh, forever. And so it was a lot of angst, like angst in a way that wasn't like at all fascinating uh, to me. <laughs> but most people, they'd probably say it's it's horrid to begin with. But I mean, it was, it was rough. Um, it wasn't a bad... <sighs> The plot sucked, but I love Daniel Klaus's style. I really liked how he did the paneling and how he would do like chapter, the chapter name in between different panels. So it would take two pages to say the origin of the death ray. And there'd be like a story going on behind that, which I thought was really creative. And so, yeah. I didn't expect it to like beat Ghost World, but I wanted to read something else by him. I'm still not, I'm not dissuaded at all. I still, there's still quite a bit by Daniel Klaus I wanted to get to, but that one was kind of a dud. So that is it for now. That is the June wrap up. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Have you read any of these? Do you want to read any of them? Any other comments, questions, concerns? Uh, I'm here in the comments. You guys are great. So thank you so much and I'll catch you in the next one.